and please give me an Elder Dragon, please give me Nico Bolas, please give me something cool. And we get the Victus Asmati. So now what we can do is we can go ahead and then just pay six life. Ask me if it's Asmati. Baron of Dice is your one-stop shop for premium wargaming dice. There are no imperfections in our dice, which means there are no balancing issues, and you can quite literally feel and hear a difference with our dice. Whatever game you play, Baron of Dice is sure to have something to elevate your game. Purchase your own set of premium dice in the description below. In this video, I'm going to do my best to convince you guys to go out and purchase the Grand Larceny Commander deck from the Outlaws of Thunder Junction. The commander for this deck is Gonti Canny Acquisitor. Guys, I'm going to tell you right now that I have not had more fun playing with a pre-con ever in my life. I am 100% sure with that statement. This commander deck scales in relation to the opponents that you're playing against and the reason why is because Gonti says that spells you cast but don't own cost one less to cast and that's important because whenever one or more creatures you control deal combat damage to a player look at the top card of that player's library then exile it face down you may play that card for as long as it remains exiled and mana of any type can be spent to cast that spell in other words, when you play this card and you're dealing damage to your opponents, you get to just take their cards. So the thing is, is that if your opponents are playing weak decks, then it's not really going to matter. However, if your opponents are, are playing very powerful decks, you can take extremely powerful cards. And just as an example today for this video, just so that you are aware of what's going on over here, I do have a deck, one of my commander decks that I pulled off to the side. This is a Elder Dragon Tribal commander deck that I own. And what I'm going to be doing is as I'm dealing damage, I'm going to be pulling cards from this commander deck over here. And I'm going to make sure it's completely random so that it simulates uh, what we're experience what you would experience when playing this actual commander deck. And um, I'm also going to cut this commander deck over here while we play test this commander deck. And as I play test this, you're going to decide whether you want to go out and buy this deck or not. Even though I highly recommend that if you're going to spend money on a deck, you buy this one. This deck is incredibly fun. If you're just looking to laugh and have fun playing a game, it's really relaxed. I will tell you, though, that your opponents are probably going to want to take you out of the game first because this deck has the uh, a high annoyance factor because you're taking your opponent's cards now this deck is random but what's not is going to be random is the cards that we have in our hand the cards we have in our hand over here we have a land here two lands a dark steel ingot for mana we have a felwar stone for mana a tower winder which searches for a command tower for us which is really nice nashi and then another land over here that can potentially give nashi unblockable so we can get those nashi triggers now we're gonna go ahead and start we're gonna draw for a turn we'll draw us into a baleful strict which is a card that we can use to attack to deal damage to our opponents so that we can go ahead and exile some cards so we'll play this here let's just grab the temple of mastery we'll play this land tapped this does allow us to scry one so we're gonna look at the top card of our library and it is an overflowing basin Looking at my hand, if I compare this with what I got in my hand, and I'm going to tell you right now, you need land when playing this deck. So personally, I'm just going to keep this on the top so that I know that I'm going to draw into it next turn. So as I pass the turn, we'll draw into that overflowing basin. We'll go ahead and just, uh, we will just play the overflowing basin. We'll tap two, and then we will cast the tower winder. Our wine is going to enter the battlefield, and as it enters the battlefield, we're going to search our library and our graveyard for a card named Command Tower. We're going to reveal it and then put it into our hand. So let me just find the Command Tower. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and take this Command Tower. We'll add it to our hand, and then after this, I think we just go ahead and pass a turn. We'll draw into our next card, which is a Dream Thief's Bandana, which this looks super cool. So whenever you equip creature deals combat damage to a player, look at the top card of the library, then exile it face down. So we basically get a double trigger off of Gonti's ability, which is pretty nice. 
So what we're going to do right now is play that command tower because we do have it in our hand. And then we can use the most or maximize our mana right now. We can tap two to play the Felwar stone here. And now that we have two mana here, we can then tap two again and we can get the Baleful Strix onto the battlefield. And then as the Baleful Strix enters the battlefield, we're gonna go ahead and draw a card. We will draw into a Lanawar Waste, and then that'll just go to our hand. Looking at our land, we have a healthy amount of mana. Then after this, we could pass a turn, but I'm just gonna say I chose the Baleful Strix because this deck doesn't really have a good amount of card draw, and our card draw inside this deck is really based on us dealing damage to our opponents, because next turn we're gonna have five mana, so we could get Gonti onto the battlefield like you're gonna see right now. And because we have two creatures, technically if we had a second opponent, we could technically draw a card as we deal damage to our opponent. So we'll go ahead and put this Flooded Grove onto our hand or into our hand we'll play the access tunnel just so we can get this out of our hand and onto the battlefield we will then tap five here and we will cast ganti ganti's gonna enter the battlefield and then what we're gonna do is go to combat we're gonna deal damage to our opponent because we only have one opponent we'll hit them with these cards over here and now i'm gonna grab this commander deck i'm just gonna cut it really quickly and then we'll pull from the top we are going to exile a Maestro's Charm. So now this card basically adds like a card into our hand. We'll leave the charm off to the side over here just so that I remember that we have it. And then we'll go ahead after that and just pass the turn. So we're gonna then untap. We will draw into a swamp that we can just put into our hand. Let's get the flooded grove that we had in our hand onto the battlefield. And then we will tap one, two, three, four. Let's get Nashi onto the battlefield. And then we'll do the same thing. We're just gonna go to combat, keeping in mind guys that this is, these both are death touch creatures and more likely than not, your opponent would rather take one damage than lose their creature. So we'll attack with both these creatures again. Then they'll deal the damage and then we will force our opponent to exile the top card of the library. This is completely random. We'll cut this and then we will see a Karthus, the Tyrant of Jund. Nice. Keeping in mind, guys, that this is going to cost one less to cast because we exiled this with Gonti as Gonti's on the battlefield. So Karthus is going to enter the exile zone over there. So Karthus is technically kind of a part of our hand. And then we would just go ahead and pass the turn. And then we will untap our creatures and draw into a three visits. We're just going to put more land onto the battlefield. We'll go ahead and put this into our hand. Counting the amount of mana we have here, let's get the land of our wastes onto the battlefield. We'll play that land. And I think just so that we can maximize the amount of cards we exile, we can tap one colorless and then two We'll play the Dream Thief's Bandana, which is going to basically create another trigger of Ganti's ability. I can then pay one to equip that to Nashi. Now watch. What's going to happen is we're going to go to combat and we're going to attack. But I'm going to tap three mana to make sure that Nashi is unblockable right now. Because of the access tunnel saying... Third creature with power three or less can't be blocked this turn. So Nashi is now unblockable. We will go to combat. Let's say that the tower winder is not going to be able to attack this turn. So we will attack with the Baleful Strix and Nashi at the same time. Both of them dealing damage to our opponent, which is unblockable. This is flying. Now we're going to have multiple triggers. So we're going to get Gonti's trigger. So we're going to exile first. Let's choose. We'll exile a Temple of Malady. So we do get lands sometimes. Actually, that's from my deck. We need to <laughs> we need to exile from this deck, actually. So we will go ahead and cut and we will reveal a Unite the Coalition, which is a super powerful card. We'll put that into our exile collection of cards. And now the equipment will trigger and we're going to do the same thing again. So let's cut. And then let's reveal 
a Void Ren, which is going to destroy target non-land permanent, can't be countered. We'll put that into our exile zone. And now Nashi is going to trigger. And Nashi says, whenever she deals combat damage to a player, exile the top card of each player's library. Until the end of turn, you may play one of those cards. If you cast a spell this way, pay life equal to its mana cost or mana value rather than paying its mana cost. So we're going to then exile the top card of our library, which we already know is a Temple of Malady. We'll have that just be exiled. We could play that this turn. But most importantly, let's see what we get out of this because we could potentially play this for free. Hopefully it's something cool. And of course, we get a forest. And that's kind of like you live. That's why this deck is kind of fun because you don't really know what you're going to be getting. And um, we'll just go ahead and we already played our land for turn, so I don't even think we could cast these this turn unfortunately and um so these both will just be exiled and um you know sometimes you get some moments that don't necessarily feel too great playing this commander deck but sometimes you get some things that do feel pretty good because what we're gonna do next is just go ahead and pass the turn here we'll untap our lands and then we can basically just go ahead and draw we got a rampant growth a lot of land in our hand right now We'll play this land for turn. And now we can basically just go ahead and do the same thing again. I could tap my mana and put Karthus onto the battlefield, which is a flying haste creature. So he would be able to enter and just attack. But let's just do this again one more time and let's see what we get. Let's just attack with Nashi herself, paying the mana to make her unblockable. One, two, and three access tunnel. Let's then reveal off of the Gonti trigger. We will reveal a Kelpie guide off the top of the library over there. So that's going to go into our exile zone. Now we get the bandana trigger and then we will exile a Wasi Tora. That's a pretty intense dragon that will then go to our hand. And then the Nashi trigger exiling our library, which is a dazzling Sphinx which we could cast for free this turn. And please give me an Elder Dragon. Please give me Nico Bolas. Please give me something cool. And we get the Victus Asmati. So now what we can do is we can go ahead and then just pay six life, cast the Victus Asmati, which is gonna cause everyone to destroy non-land permanence and a whole bunch of really cool things. So my point is with this playtest is that you can see the type of cards that we're exiling. We do get whiffs. We do whiff sometimes where we are exiling lands, unfortunately. But a lot of the times you end up exiling cards that could be pretty impactful in the game, you know? And I think that a lot of people, when looking at this deck, you just assume that you're going to be exiling lands a lot. But people tend to play powerful cards. And if you're playing against powerful decks, the game I played... I played this deck against three other decks and I was the first person to lose the game because I just kept taking everybody's powerful cards. And it was, this is just a pre-con. Like, think about that. The player at the table that was targeted the most and was removed first was the player that was playing a pre-con. Okay, so obviously when you update this deck and you add a lot more unblockable creatures, you take out some cards that are kind of unnecessary. This deck turns into a thing where Every time when you play a game, it's always a random experience. And to me, when you're playing Magic, random experiences tend to be incredibly fun. So that's just kind of my thing. But if you're looking for a deck that's going to be like CEDH powerful and is going to be the best deck in your collection, maybe you might want to think about buying the Stella Lee Commander deck and watching that video instead so you get a feel for how Stella Lee plays. So I may convince you to buy that deck instead, okay? Hope you guys enjoyed this video. That is all of the commander decks from the Outlaws of Thunder Junction. There is all of the decks on the channel, so you can go ahead and watch those videos, okay? Always remember, everybody, eat healthy. Actually, let me know in the comment section below whether you're gonna buy this deck or not, and if not, let me know why, okay? Always remember, everybody, eat healthy, okay? Work out every single day. And most importantly, you guys gotta remember to believe in yourself. Like the video, subscribe, all right? Peace out, everybody.